I post on social media about self-acceptance quite a bit. And I'm sure you see it quite a lot if you're on Instagram or Facebook where you see inspirational quotes where they're asking you to accept yourself. But I always say that it's a little bit easier said than done. And when I work with my clients, it's often something that they struggle with. If you'd like to find out how I help them, then stick around. Hello, my name is Elfrida Manahan Vaughan of Metamorphics and I created this video series under the circumstances you're totally freaking normal for people who feel that the stuff that's happened to them in their past has made them always doubt themselves or question who they are and wonder if they're like everybody else or if there's something wrong with them. And what I always say is no, based on your life experience under the circumstances, you are totally normal. In this video, I want to talk about self-acceptance. And so I often talk to my clients about self-acceptance. I teach self-acceptance in my classes. I also teach it when I'm teaching meditation, but it is quite a difficult concept for some people to get their heads around. For one thing that we might intellectually know that we should accept ourselves. We might intellectually know in our head that we should be forgiving ourselves. We should be kinder to ourselves, that we should engage in self-care. But when it comes to actually doing it, very often there is a bit of a disconnect. And so in my experience working with clients, the disconnect often comes from their body. So they may be able to recognize that self-acceptance is a good thing. They may even tell themselves that self-acceptance is a good thing, but the self-acceptance doesn't exist within them because there is a disconnect from their thoughts from and from their body. And the reason I believe this happens, and there is some research into this, is that when we move into our more adult phases of existence, we can reason, we can think logically, we can recognize when we're not doing things properly. But a lot of what impacts us, which is what I call our emotional past, what actually impacts us is stuff that's happened when we were little, stuff that happened to us when we were children, before we had language, before we had reason, before we had the ability to problem solve. And so when it comes to self-acceptance, there is often a disconnect between the body's experience of accepting and the head's recognition of it as a useful thing to do. And that often happens because the feelings we have, the wounds that we have from our past came to us as children. And they're held, in my experience, often within their body. When I work with clients using metaphors and using some NLP and aspects of mindfulness, we, we explore where those things exist in our body. But when it comes to self-acceptance, it's not enough to just accept yourself right now. We actually have to go back and accept ourselves as we were. We have to accept that we did our best. We have to accept that under the circumstances, we were trying to be our best selves. Nobody sets out to, to screw up or make a mistake. You know, you don't get up in the morning and think, oh, you know what, I'm going to cut somebody up on the road and I'm going to ding the side of my car on the street or I'm going to fall flat in my ass. That's not our intention. But what happens is we get to a particular point in our day or something happens and we don't recognize everything that's going on. We're not fully present or there's some variable that we're not fully conscious of. And then what happens is we do fall flat in our ass. But what we do is we look back from the place we are in the present, which is, oh, I should have noticed that or I should have done this. And then we beat ourselves up about it. But what we actually have to do is go back to the point in the past and accept that version of ourselves, accept that moment in time and the recognition that when we we made the mistake, if we made a mistake, that we did it because we didn't know any better. We didn't realize there was other information. We certainly hadn't learned, you know, to do things differently because if we did, we wouldn't choose to make the mistake. Nobody wants to make mistakes. We make them because we don't have all the information. And so if we want to accept ourselves, we have to go back to the point in the past where we are judging or the, where the judgment lies. And we have to accept that version of ourselves. And in doing so, it makes it easier to accept ourselves as we are right now, recognizing that we are doing our best, that you are doing your best. I know for me, self-acceptance has been a huge part of my own personal journey be able to forgive myself for past mistakes, particularly when it comes to toxic shame. For any of you who've been abused like I have in the past, then 
being able to forgive that version of ourselves is really, really important. Recognizing that if at certain events when we experienced any kind of abuse, that if we froze, it was because we were protecting ourselves. If we didn't speak up, it was because it was a desire to keep safe. And so being able to go back to those points and accept ourselves then and practice self-acceptance for what we did then is really important. And then it facilitates being able to do that now. Now, it doesn't mean that it's a perfect journey and it doesn't mean that you won't have blips along the way. I know I do. I still find that little voice will rear its ugly head every so often and tell me I'm not good enough or I should be doing this or I should be doing that. But because I regularly practice self-acceptance, rather than trying to get rid of it or deny that it exists or try to be perfect and cover it up, I turn towards it and I recognize it and I say, I see you. I see you. I see you from the past that's trying to protect me. I see you from the past that's trying to look after me. And I recognize that you're trying to stop me making mistakes and I accept you. Because if we don't accept the good and the bad, then we don't really accept ourselves. And self-acceptance is not about accepting that we are great or wonderful or all the nice things about ourselves. Real self-acceptance is about realizing that we are messy, we are flawed, we make mistakes and all of that is okay. If you'd like to find out more about what I do, please check out my website. You'll find it below. Subscribe to my channel so that you can see more of my videos and feel free to book a free 30 minute session with me to find out how my coaching may help you. I'd also love if you'd follow me on social media. And remember, no matter what you're going through in your life, I know that you're doing your best and under the circumstances, you're totally freaking normal.